Okay, so today we install our sink. That is this right here. And this is a Kohler Neo Rock NEO ROC. I'll put the link down below for what it is. Um, but this is the sink. It's black. Um, it's made of Neo Rock, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're going to throw this in. Hey, <laughs> what? It's a composite sink. Composite. There we go. And we're going to throw this in over counter. What do you call it? Yep. It's, an, oh, it's a drop-in sink. So we drop have uh, typically two, two different styles. You have an under mount that sets up underneath the cabinet, and then the uh, countertop kind of flows into it. And you have a drop-in sink that actually sits up on top of the cabinet so the countertop comes across, and then you have a little lip for the sink. And this one can be um, the template states that you can do. Um, you can actually do an under mount or a no, uh, drop-in sink. So here's a top mount or an undermount sink for this. Um, so it actually gives you the template to do either way. Nice, nice, nice. So we're gonna cut into the epoxy countertop here. And I think we have to run tape because the epoxy isn't fully cured. So we have to run tape around the border. Well, that and, and uh, um, actually the main reason I use tape is because uh, for twofold is, um, especially if you're doing uh, a, a newer countertop, um, they tend to chip or a cured countertop, it tends to chip. So the tape will help seal that so that way you don't get the chips off of it when you're cutting it and um, for number two this is a black countertop and it's really hard to see lines on it so um, I'll put tape down and then draw my lines over the top of the tape. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Lemon squeezy. I was going to say that. You didn't have to say that. I was going to say that. Yeah I beat you. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to measure basically across to the center of the sink um, so I'm going to go um, so this is just a, uh, this area is just a cover panel um, that pops off. So we pop that off and I'm going to measure the center of the sink. So it's a 36 inch cabinet, so 18 inches. I'm going to make just a little bit of mark inside of that and that'll be hidden from the cover panel. So, uh, and then I'm going to measure across so I know where the center of it is, which is 43 and 7 sixteenths. Why is it 43 and 7 sixteenths? Um, because the center of the cabinet is where you want the center of your sink. And so 43 and 7 sixteenths, it just happens to be my measurement from the edge of the wall. So that way I can get a common pole, uh, a common place to measure from down here and up top. So oh, okay. I'll measure from the wall in both places. So that way I don't have to guess at where the edge of the, the uh, cabinet is for the sink. Boom, boom. So I'm going to run me a piece of tape at 43 and 7 sixteenths, roughly. I'm going to draw a line here in just a minute. And that'll give me my center, so that way I can center this sink template on top of the on top of the tape. And overdo it a little bit, so that way you're not having to redo things. So actually, my sink's only going to be about uh, two foot deep, or a little less than two foot deep. But I'm going to go significantly farther than that, so I don't have to do it again and again. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be somewhat cute. Yeah, just somewhat cute, you know. Just give it a little wink. Doesn't have to be a little supermodel. Right. And then on this template here, we've got, uh, um, so this dotted line on the outside is actually the size of your sink. This next inside line is for top mount installation, which is what we're doing. And if you were doing an under mount, you would cut, it, um, cut this template on the inside line for an under mount sink. So since we're doing the top mount sink, we're going to be cutting around this first dark line on the outside. You don't have to worry about getting it exact exact because uh, the overhang on the sink will be roughly a half inch if you're off just a little bit. It's not going to make that big of a difference. So then we're also going to want to measure front to back to make sure that it's the same distance across here. Um, so that way everything looks nice and even and square. Um, so that way when you go to cut your hole and install your sink, it doesn't look wonky and kind of out of place. And you'll be able to make a little bit of adjustment um, at, at when you go to put the sink in anyways, you'll have a little bit of playroom. So 
what you're going to do is want to cut the hole on the back side of the cabinet opening. So from the cabinet, from the face of the cabinet here, I have an inch and five eighths. And this piece here is actually three quarters of an inch. So you add those two together and you get to two and three eighths of an inch. So that's roughly where you're, so I'm actually gonna go just a little bit further just to give myself a little bit of room. So I'm gonna go two and a half inches to the inside. And again, I'm gonna run just a piece of tape roughly in that area. Two and a half inches this way. Yep, two and a half inches from the face because across. that's what my measurements came out to be. Yeah. Yep. And I'm gonna go all the way across two and a half inches. Oop. Then I'm gonna overshoot it quite a bit. So that way I don't have to guess later or have to add more tape or to stop and redo things. So my cabinet actually goes is somewhere in here. So I'm gonna overshoot that a little bit. Just make sure that I've got enough tape on there to hit that two and a half inch mark. Tape's cheap, always use more if you can. Yeah, yeah use as much as you want to there. And then you're gonna measure roughly where this template goes. You're gonna do the same thing. Um, you're gonna put another piece of tape back here and then down each side. And there are two dotted lines usually. They'll give you a, a point somewhere on the paper where it'll tell you where the center of your sink's at. So that's why I keep placing it back on this place because the cent my center line will be somewhere on this tape. And again, you don't have to be super ac accurate with the tape. You'll draw your lines before you end up cutting it out anyway. So again, I'm gonna run a piece of tape down each edge or where the edge would be. Now we're gonna measure back our two and a half inches and make, make sure that this portion right here is nice and square. I always recommend that you measure this because the first thing that people see, even if you have a, a wall back here, um, that's less noticeable usually than the front edges. Um, and, and you may need to play with that a little bit. You may need to pull it forward or backward just a little bit in order to make sure you have enough room to, um, if you had a wall back here, make sure you have enough room to get your sink in. So. We're going to measure that back to, actually first I'm going to center this up at 43 and 7 sixteenths. And we're going to use my dotted center line on the paper. If you pull off of that side, usually it'll be nice and square, but you're going to see here, our wall actually runs off at a little bit of an angle. So if I measured this across at two and a half inches like I was going to, this side comes to two and seven sixteenths, whereas this side is two and an eighth. That's because the wall that I pulled off is kind of runs at a little bit of an angle. So we're going to actually square this up versus trying to make it even over here because you're going to see this worse or, you know, you're going to see this a lot more than what you would see. Much more uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, this parallel surface. So as long as my center line is here on the bottom, we're not going to worry too much about the top one. So again, we're going to go two and a half inches. So I'm going to make a mark over here at two and a half and over here at two and a half. I'm going to put my center line on the mark and then put my ends down on my two and a half inch mark. And kind of smooth it out a little bit so that way you get the wrinkles out so you're not cutting your hole just a little bit too small. You have to cut it two or three times. Now that'll hold it in place. And then we're going to do the same thing. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit, put you a couple pieces of tape up here. And then since we're like right here at the edge of this yep. tape, does so that matter? It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to add another piece just for, for my... Uh, if you got more tape, yep. use it. Yep. Because, I mean, uh, another thing is, is a lot of times the saws that you use can and will um, scratch the surface of the table or of the top. And so if you have more tape, even you can even make a bigger, wider path because the, the uh, uh, saw that I'm going to use has a, has a wider base on it. Um, so that way, I mean, the water base, I'm not too worried about scratching the inside of it. So I'm not too worried about creating a bigger path, but you can always create a, a bigger swatch here on the side so that way your your uh the guard on your yeah, saw the guard, yeah your your, your uh, table on your on your saw doesn't uh, scratch the surface but so then we're just going to trace it out around the piece of paper here hold your paper down because it'll try to buckle a little bit on you and you can, remember you can always cut it too small you can always make it bigger but you can't always make it Smaller. Smaller. So always err on the side of small. And then you're going to have places here where you didn't make a mark. You can always just pull this off and continue that line over if you wanted to. Or it's such a small space where you actually don't need to. I mean, you could probably. You can eyeball it. Anywhere. Yeah, eyeball it across there. So we're just going to pull this off. 
clean. That gives us a line for cutting. So uh, these, uh, if you're doing an undermount sink, you're gonna also want to mark your your holes for your faucets. However, you want those set up. If you wanted a soap dispenser, or if you had a an air switch like we're doing for a garbage disposal or something over on this side, or uh, you know a, a handheld sprayer, you can um, typically that's what those are used for. And these are typically used for your sink. So if you have just a single handled sink, you just use the center one. If you have two handles, then you'll use uh, all three. And we're just widening our path. Yep. Just gonna widen our saw path so that way I don't scratch anything too terribly much. And I'm not too worried about scratching this. Because um, it's coming out. Yeah, because this is going to be the part that drops out where your sink goes anyway. Now we've got our lines all marked out where our sink is going to go in. Um, I typically, um, you can drill, um, do this typically two different ways. Um, you can either drill holes in all four corners. A lot of people like to do that. And then use a jigsaw. Um, and then you can just follow along uh, the line as you cut it. Um, and the holes just allow you a place to put the blade in. Just a key, just make sure that your blade's long enough to go through the, your entire countertop. They do make shorter ones, so, I mean, if you try to use that, it'll just kind of bounce around. And if it bounces out, it could put a, a good scratch in your countertop. Um, the other tool I'm using is a circular saw. So I actually like to cut my straight lines with my circular saw and then use my jigsaw just to finish out the corners um, and, and not necessarily use um, holes in the corners with a, like a paddle bit. Um, I usually do put one hole in the middle. And we'll link some good ones down below if you need a jigsaw, if you need a bit and drill, we'll yep. link all the stuff down below that yeah. you need. So I like to put one hole kind of in the middle so that way when I get to the end of uh, with the jigsaw, the whole countertop doesn't just drop out um, and you know crush whatever's underneath. The hole is to hold on with. Yeah, the hole will be for me to stick my finger into and just kind of hang on to the countertop so it just doesn't drop um, and, uh, you know, smash everything and scratch up the inside of the counter. We could do or like a three hole cabinet. like bowling ball grip. That way we get a super grip on it. Yeah. That would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put one hole here. Since I'm right handed, I'll finish all of my left, the stuff on my left side first so that way I can cut with my right hand and hold on with my left hand. Yeah. So I'll put it on the left hand side. So I'm going to end up cutting basically just inside of these round corners on each one. So I'm going to cut and just basically leave a couple, an inch or two on each corner. And then I'll finish that out with my jigsaw later. Um, but I'm going to cut each side along my uh, line that I drew around my template. And then we'll get the jigsaw up, finish, uh, finish cutting the corners. Boom, boom. We've got four cuts. About and a like teaspoon I, of dust. Yep, I left my uh, corners, and I'll finish those off with a jigsaw. Um, again, if you're afraid you're going to mess up, cut it smaller. You can always cut it bigger. So um, just take your time, and uh, um, it'll eventually turn out fine.
Now I'm going to finish the corners off with my jigsaw. Um, so I'm going to do the side that I put my hole on first. And then so that way when I cut the other side, I can help support it on this side. I'm going to do the far side first because it's the hardest. Cut this far side first. I'm going to support it using this hole here with my hand. Leave the tape on um, for your test fit because um, if you have to cut it again, uh, the tape's already installed. You don't have to retape it. So we're going to go ahead and drop it in. Make sure that it fits fine. What you're looking for is make sure that you've got support all the way around the edges and that you didn't cut it too shallow for when you're going to put your, your faucet and stuff on. So you want a good you know, half inch or, or better gap back here. Um, so that way you can put the, uh, there's a nut that usually sets on the bottom side of the fixture. So that way it holds it in place on top of the sink. You want to make sure you have plenty of space back there. When you're dry fitting this, it looks like this fits pretty good. And again, we're going to be able to move this around a little bit um, to make sure that we are nice and square. So that's, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of play so that you can do that. Uh, so that way your reveal is all the same and it looks nice and clean when you're done. So that looks good. We're going to pull this out and pull the tape. So if you notice, it still kind of chipped the edges just a little bit around the edge, uh, mainly on this back side. I mean, you see a little bit of chips, but uh, the tape helped prevent it, prevents that from going any further. So um, again, if you, uh, like I said, if you're gonna err on the side of caution, you're gonna wanna cut it just a little bit too short when you dry fit that before you pull the tape off would be the time to make any adjustments that you need to make if you need to cut a little bit bigger one side or the other. Um, a lot of your aluminum sinks will come with a track on the bottom lip of the uh, sink um, and so that track actually needs to sit down inside this opening so that's usually the the, uh, the sinks that usually need to have the adjustments made to them um, but this one doesn't come with that and um, this one silicones down so we don't need to worry about those this countertop's going to make it uh, uh, resurfaced. resurfaced so um, at this point what we would do is run a bead of silicone uh, before we actually set this in we'd run a bead of silicone all the way around the edge of the opening and then set this down on top of it and that silicone also acts as an adhesive as, as well as a, uh, a water deterrent so um, then we would clean up the edges once we set this down on top but since this is getting resurfaced we're not actually going to attach the uh, sink down to the countertop with silicone that way it's easily pulled out here in the next week you know week or so so that way we don't have to clean it clean up surfaces and everything else just a temporary install. First and foremost, you want to make sure you have enough space back here to attach your faucet. And then from that point on, you're going to make sure you're going to measure from the inside edge of the sink to the edge of the um, countertop and make that nice and, and uh, straight all the way across. So this side shows two and an eighth. We're going to measure this over here and this is two and three sixteenths. So either this end needs to come forward or that end needs to go back either way. Too far. Two inches actually there. We're still at two and an eighth there. So we'll bump this back to two and 
two and then eight inches, and that's where our sink will sit. Boom, boom. So then after the, uh, you can wait a few minutes and let the silicone set up so that way you've got it in place before you start installing your your uh, disposal or your uh, you know your drains in your faucet um, and then come back to it when it's nice and secure but again since we're going to uh, replace or resurface the countertop and pull the sink out later we're going to go ahead and install all of our fixtures